Welcome to Rooted Within with Lily and Dan, a podcast that shines a spotlight on positive change makers, sharing their stories of legacy, inspiration, and impact. Dan. Hi, how are Hi. you? What do you think of my new voice? I kind of like it. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I, I sort of feel like I want to keep it, but you I don't You sound like, think... um, like a late night radio host know, from the right? US or something. I don't know, like from a well, horror that's, movie. That's, that's a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> they always end up dying see, in horror movies, see, to for, be careful. For, for all the Aussies out there, if I said, you know, I've got my own 0055 number, they'd know what that means. <laughs> I'm sure they story. would. I'm sure they would. There's, anyway, a, lot of, there's a lot of energy in this podcast studio today. I think we're all a little bit hyped. We're all a bit hyped. Who's we in are. the studio today? We have Am. Hi, How Dan are and Lily. I'm Hello. great, thank you. Finally, we've, we've got you in the studio. We've been trying to have this session for a very long time. We I think this is the fourth or the fifth. Is it really? We did it. We yeah. did it. We Sorry. Did it. It's, it's been okay. a bit chaotic. Now, is M short for something? It is. It is short for something. Short for? That I'm not going to share. <laughs> oh, <laughs> already? Right. Holding it to because it's a very personal <laughs> thing. Fair, um, fair. My grandfather gave me my name and oh. it's very precious to me. Um, but yeah, not a lot of people know it, to be honest. Okay, I like so, the secrecy. Yeah. I mean, go. I've just been known as Armil. So yeah, that's... Can I ask one question? Like, where does it originate from? What's the um, heritage behind Indian. it? Indian. So I'm fully Indian, yeah. Ah, okay. you're Indian? Yes. Ah, because you have a very, I'm, I'm very, born, very great um, British accent. Yes, I'm also from London. So I was born Sikh into okay. a Sikh family. My uh, great-great-grandparents originated from India. My mum's father came to the UK in the 1950s okay. on a boat on a boat wow. and worked and my um, grandfather moved to East Africa Tanzania where my father was born and he came to London when he was a kid my mother was born in London uh, wow. so yeah. there was a massive amount of the Indian um how do you say diaspora? No, diaspora. Um, yeah, who who moved, who moved from to East, East Africa? Africa. Yeah. So you have a lot of people in the Tanzania, the yeah. Dar es Salaam, Nairobi, Kenya area, as well as Uganda. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because I've got friends who are from Indian heritage, born and raised in Uganda. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Who talked to me yesterday, actually. Random. Anyway, oh, we, we were yeah. off topic. <laughs> so we always like to know a little bit about our guests. So I guess who is Am? Who am I? Am. I'm just, I'm just a, a human being living this life. Uh, this crazy life right this now. This crazy roller coaster of a life, and I'm just trying to be doing my bit in this society. And you know, I think life's just about being kind, offering people opportunities. Um, you know, in my life, I'm grateful for having given the experience that I have had, and at a very young age, where I'm at that point in my life, where I am giving back and creating opportunities and and jobs and so on for people yeah. have you always have you always been sort of a giving nature as a kid is it um i think i was a little quiet you know yeah. <laughs> i was a little quiet maybe um used to read a lot um i'm actually a trained artist wow okay. so um what type of abstract um, artist ah, wow. yeah, so i went to art school uh, I went to Central St. Martins. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, That's so huge. got in. Yeah, so got in because <coughs> obviously I I was very I'm still very creative, um, and went into the fashion industry. And is that kind of? I mean, we've co- obviously skipped a lot oh, to yeah, get there. So do you want me to no, no, no. That? I mean, you could, you could go <laughs> as far <laughs> back we'll, as you we'll want. Go, we'll go. We'll go. We'll go wherever go you want to. I mean, I was raised in London. Uh, I went to an all girls church school. Um, yeah, and then went to university. I, I don't know what else. So you always wanted. wanted to be in fashion or? When I was younger, yes, I had a plan in my head. I, my my plan was, yeah, I'm going to go in fashion and then I'm going to be a teacher when I'm, I've made my money and I get a little yeah. older. But um, the journey's well, why been fashion very... to teaching? Um, and what would you teach? So I think one of the reasons I always wanted to teach and give back in life, um, in my head, this was when I was a kid, right? Because... I had a, a not very nice art teacher in the girls' school. So when mm. we got to sixth form, I moved um, my classes, my art classes to the boys' school next, well, down the road. And my art teacher just was so amazing. He was so supportive um, from what I had at the girls' school. And he really believed in me and he really believed in his students. And I just loved that that whole nature. And... Um, I just thought, yeah, when I get to retirement sort of age, I'm going to go into teaching and I won't want to pay really it forward. pay it forward and help other kids. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, but life's evolved in a, a different way of teaching, okay. which is great. <laughs> All right, so t- tell us about um, your life into fashion. 
my life into fashion. So graduated from Central St. Martins. Um, so I specialize in uh, Actually, I'm going to stop you for a moment. Yes. How did your family take you wanting to be in fashion? Because that's not... It's not the norm as an it's Indian not girl. The norm. But actually, my parents have been 100% supportive awesome. in my whole career, my whole life. I don't... I think every um, parent is very different in terms of how they raise their children. I, I don't think I came from a very typical Indian background. My father is a racing driver. So growing no, up, I, yeah, so growing <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's just talk about that for one second. A, a racing driver for who? Um, so he used to race at Goodwood and race old classic cars and no then way. go into MGs. Yeah. That's, okay, that's not a typical Indian dad's no, <laughs> job either. So, that's brilliant. Yeah, I think Sorry for being it's sounding it's so okay. stereotypical. It's okay. Um, I actually got questioned this about a year and a half ago when I did another interview. And I kind of was a bit like, wait, hang on. Does this still happen where people aren't allowed to do certain things? And I think you then realize how blessed you are yeah. and... Also, you know, I, I used to do a lot of, well, I still sometimes do do a lot of the Asian network. And that's mm. for me to kind of share a lot of the mindset because I want people to think in a different way. I don't want people but to But it shows think that your a... whole family lineage has always thought differently. Yeah. Because yeah. even for your dad, so I, I didn't mean any disrespect of yeah. being stereotypical, but yeah. just traditionally mm -hmm. there were those hurdles. Yeah. So to, it sounds like your family has always sort of gone against the norm and has sort of danced to the beat of their own tune, yeah. which is fantastic. Or was it each of you in your generation pioneering? I think my father changed that for okay. himself. Um, I'm not going to go into no, like, no, no, yeah, no, no, so no. I, I think, you know, he, yeah, he, he's an awesome he guy. Like, he yeah. really supported me with doing whatever I wanted to do. Mm. Yeah. You know, there wasn't, like, the typical kind of, you need to be an accountant or solicitor. Yeah. That I've never oh, had that in my... I've never had, yeah, I've never had that in my life. That's it was wonderful. kind of like, I'm going to do fashion. Okay, whatever. Do whatever you no, want. No. You know, my brother didn't want to go to university. Okay, don't go. Like, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I've had great support for my family mm. um you know especially with the journey i've had in my yeah. career which has been great what was the journey into fashion like um so obviously my first year after graduating i went into supporting certain designers um and you know it's not again it's a roller coaster industry yeah. it's a very different industry unless you've kind of made it and when you're in the manufacturing game as well like you're really relying on you, you create a collection which yeah. costs thousands then you're doing a runway show and then you're relying on buyers to buy your product in yeah. you know a certain amount of units uh, the issue i feel feel like a lot of fashion brands have had is the fact that you have to put you're, you're waiting and relying on units yeah then you don't get a deposit from the buyer so you're forking up your own deposits yep. to factories so you've got to pay off the factory you've got to pay up for the goods and the custom, for the customs yep. to bring it in and then you don't get the money back from the brand the buyer until 30 days i don't know if things have changed now but that was in my day i can assume it's probably something similar yeah it, it probably really is and you know i after that yeah that i kind of was in that industry i just I didn't like the energy I was around, you know, I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of drugs and rock and roll. Yeah. And I kind of was like, I didn't do four years and you need to kind of be on a, a freelance kind of basis. Yeah. You know, because it does have a very, well, it has a perception, doesn't it? You know, mm. it's a, people look at it and look at it very stereotypically of, you know, lots of excess and flamboyancy and ego and power trips and yeah, emotions I'm, all over the place. Yeah, and it's, um, it's creativity and yeah. there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people with different personalities. Mm. <laughs> so and very big personalities. Very big personalities. But also as well, so, I mean, let's take it a little bit deeper. You know, you often see these creative geniuses and they have their own internal struggles. Yeah. You yeah. know, that they're also battling within the demons and, you know, you see it in the media mm -hmm. through addiction abuse and, 100%. you know, sometimes, you know, look at what happened to yeah. people like Alexander McQueen. <laughs> yeah. You know, it goes deep. I know that's a very deep yeah. way to, yeah. to go, but it's a very... 
Oh, come on, we'll it's a very stressful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but it's a very stressful. It's a very stressful yeah. industry. It is a very stressful industry, and I think you know when you are the creative, when you are an artist, you want to focus on being the creative and the artist. Not all you the don't business. You don't want to be dealing with the rest of the business. You're not. You don't want to be dealing with the finances and the accounts. Mm. But at that point, the designer or the artist cannot afford mm. to have these people around them yeah. so they're doing it themselves but we don't get taught all of yeah. this in school yeah. so did you did you have your own brand um i actually did at, but um so asos actually picked me up um because i went into manufacturing at 22 mm -hmm. years old um so i was already um so i launched a manufacturing consultancy when i was about 22 23 um, wow. So what's a manufacturing <laughs> consultancy? So manufacturing consultancy. So what that ended up consisting of is, so after I left the freelance world, I ended up working with one of my amazing mentors, John Michael Ingram, who, you know, has passed by, uh, passed now. And he had a manufacturing agency. He'd already been in the knitwear industry. He was in his very, um, he was in his late 70s. So for him to be in an office, it was a time pass. But he, it was me and him. He was my mentor yeah. mm. that taught me everything in terms of how to get in manufacturing, how to do samples, how to bring ship things over, and because it's a massive process and deal with buyers. You know, yeah. Everything from like you know where do you source the the, the raw materials yeah. to make the garments or you know whichever product 100%. through to the actual manufacturing process through to shipping and logistics. Yeah. So that <laughs> that I had no idea what the hell wow. I was doing, and I had my year and a half with him where he just. I just picked up everything. You're a when you, yeah, because you're one to one with someone. Yeah. Every single day, you're sitting next to them and you're learning from the wisest person who has achieved so much in their life. He, you know, dressed the Beatles. He had the first fashion public uh, forecast publication company in the wow. world. His mother la uh, launched a brand, Joseph, on the King's Road. He'd already. Okay, how did you meet him? How did I meet him? I think I had applied for a job. Okay. And I literally had an interview and we clicked. Yeah. He was a knitwear specialist. I had just done knitwear. Um, so it was like a commonality between the yeah. two. Yeah. And wow. you look back and you're like, wow, what a blessing. <laughs> yeah. What a, an, an opportunity. Blessing. It's a gift. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, one of my oldest friends, um, you know, Rosaline, she's 84, I think now. And she's from Ireland. And I met her whilst mm -hmm. I was freelance uh, designing because she, again, has created opportunities for for people she's a hand knitter yeah. her name's rosaline hegarty for anyone that wants to look That's her a great up. irish and name yeah and she you know is an award-winning specialist that's created designs for Tommy Hilfiger. She's, you know, she's supplied to Macy's and the UK Selfridges. And she she's just an amazing woman. These and are incredible people that yeah. you were absorbed into. And I was, I was so network. young. At the time, I didn't think of anything about it, you know? Mm. And you just like, okay, this, is, this has been the journey that, god or the universe or my spirit guides or my angels have given me yeah. for a reason and you know it all is the purpose we live um but obviously back then i didn't think like that <laughs> yeah. you're just in it you're, you're, yeah. well, hopefully you're enjoying life at the time so manufacturing consultancy yeah so um yeah so at 22 22 23 so a lot oh. of my friends at the time were like hey um you know you're you're dealing with creating samples and getting them in stores i want to create my brand how do i do this so it'd kind of be like right okay consulting them right you need to get this sample in let's make it from the factory get a first sample second sample and then it'd be like let's go work with some buyers right where are we going to stock this is this a selfridges product yeah. or is this like a harrods product or is this like a top shop product and then i'd go and have meetings with buyers so i had already built those relationships so it kind of be like selling them the units of the brand um and getting in the was, orders but that how did that feed your creative side how, oh i i love both sides yeah okay i love both sides yeah. um which is very uh, unique because you either love one or the other yeah either very much like the business minded or you're the creative yeah so yeah. i've i've kind of got a good balance of both of them yeah. um i wish i could do more of the creative stuff more now but i think sometimes the the creativity comes in the business side mm. at the same time with mm. strategies and solutions and mm. solutions yep. um 
<laughs> but yeah, I so the the manufacturing consultancy was a 360 consultancy. So we were helping building brands at the same time, doing the samples, getting the orders in, so doing the buying stuff and then getting them into stores and doing the shipments. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that that was my life from 22 to 28 until I had a burnout. Now tell us about that. Um, I was very exhausted. It wasn't just the manufacturing business I had. Um, you know, by 25, I also got picked up from ASOS to do an exclusive line with them. So I did a, an exclusive men's knitwear collection. So it was the first. So your own design. Yeah. So it was under, it, the brand was called Amgola. So it was some crazy men's knitwear. So when we're talking about knitwear yoga, joggers, I did that before Kanye. Wow. <laughs> so, um, and the leather joggers. Um, but yeah, we did some crazy knitwear pieces, hand knitted pieces as well. That was really cool. So we did about three seasons with them. Which I got through a burnout around about 28, it's yeah. relatively young. Yeah, I, I, I well, How I was doing quite a lot. So I had yeah. the manufacturing agency, I had the brand as well. At the time, I also got headhunted by Burberry um, to help build their children's wear business when they brought that into London. Um, I think, yeah, I, you know, there was a lot of traveling. Yeah. There was a lot of traveling. I was in factories for three months and then I'd be back and then I'd be in Paris or Italy for a trade show or with clients at their, bu like with buyers and And, and the so perception on. of all of this is that it's a glamorous, oh, yeah. amazing lifestyle wow. and you like, get to travel the world. I so would, what people think yeah. on events. <laughs> yeah, no, but true. I, I get it all the time and people are like, oh, you're always traveling. I was like, yeah. it's not great. Yeah, and you know, I'd have to tra leave uh, London to go to Barcelona and I'd leave in the early in the morning and be back the same night yeah. because I had a meeting. Yeah. People but underestimate it's not the, the carnage that travel actually has on the body. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm trying estimate. to minimize my travel at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently I've had Arnica tablets are really good. Yeah. And that's from a past flight attendant. Oh, so she's recommended no idea what that. that is. Arnica, just yeah, Arnica. I'll try them. Yeah, buy yeah. and get them. <laughs> so how did you know how did you know you were going through burnout? Because I could not get up out of bed. Yeah. I was exhausted. <laughs> I was tired. Mm. I stopped enjoying what I wanted what I was doing. I hated it. And my health was suffering. I'm high, I get anemic if I don't look after myself and have that balance. Mm. And I knew something wasn't right. And I think when you stop enjoying what you're doing, something's kind of wrong. Yeah. So it was, I was tired. And how long did you go through that process for? About a few months. And I decided, is this what my life is? Am I chasing the paper or am I look after my health? And do was, I want to live? Was there a moment <laughs> of something like, a, like a, a rock bottom or a... A moment that you're like, okay, now I've got a problem. Yeah, I think that was during that time. And I was yeah. like, I'm done with this. I don't enjoy what I'm doing. Like, you know, I looked at my friends and my family. I barely see my friends and my family. Yeah. And I was just like, is this what I'm living for? And I just, I, you know, I made a decision. I'm going to wrap up the manufacturing side of yeah. my business. I enjoyed the consulting, yeah. but I was over the manufacturing. I mean, when you have shipments that are late because of the weather or because it's mm, snowing yeah. and you have to deal with your client you have to deal with the manufacturer you've got it you've got to these deal are all with the, the things outside of your control so yeah, you're apologizing for things absolutely. which you can't help absolutely and i just <coughs> i thought you know your health is always more mm. important than chasing money mm. and i think you know when you're that young you're thinking yeah i'm gonna make money i'm gonna you know you have that mindset of becoming a millionaire or billionaire and you're just chasing the paper yeah mm. How and that's what I was doing. So I chose chasing the paper over my happiness and over my health. How and then you have to take a step back and you're like, nah, my, my health and my happiness is actually more so important. The, when you understood, did you understand you had burnout or did you seek help to have it explained as burnout to you? No, I don't think I knew what burnout was at that time. Do you know what I mean? Like life. a 20 Two very different things. A very, very different things. Yeah. Not understanding that you're tired and you're not enjoying it anymore is one mm. thing. But the, the term burnout well, is only really... I didn't know until really you told me. Yeah. <laughs> but there, yeah, I, yeah. Remember, I remember very clearly. You know, yeah. so it's it's not something that people understand. They're just like, oh, I'm just tired. Or, you know, yeah. overworked. Mm. Or blah, blah, blah. But to lose the love of what you do when you have usually loved it. Yeah. I think you just have had enough. You're like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm But that's a done. sad day as well. 
It is because it's almost like grief. It yeah. is. Because, it's a you know, I, I wrapped up the manufacturing side, but I didn't wrap up the consulting side. And it was kind of like a, a relief at the mm. same time, but it was also grief because it took me a year to wrap up the manufacturing side because we had orders and so on to yeah. fulfill. It's not like you can just close down overnight. Oh, hell no. <laughs> like you've yeah. got responsibilities. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I then did take a consult, uh, continued my consulting route. And, you know, I'm very blessed and grateful because I've always had opportunities that have come my way. And, um, you know, interestingly, I consulted for um, Topshop at the time, as well as QVC's fashion channel. Yeah. The thing is, I, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the same. Did you feel just sort of taking a step back as you were wrapping everything up and, you know, closing off something that you were so passionate about, was there any sort of part of it where you felt like you were failing because? Mm. Mm, no, because the manufacturing took its toll on me and I, I continued the consultancy. So mm. I still continued doing that and I still continue to do yeah. that today. And then, no, Cause, I, I cause, don't. you know, you're an yeah. achiever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. whatever you put your mind to, set your mind to, you've achieved. Yeah. So there's there's still that part, that, that yeah. voice in your head that's like, oh, you know. Yeah, I, I think for me it was a big relief not to do the manufacturing, okay. if I'm honest with yeah. you. Because I remember, you know, during the winter being in like, um, I don't, the shipment uh, storage units and, you know, going with my team and putting, I remember we did a million units uh, for the Christmas jumper boom. Ouch. So, which was huge. So this was about, you know, 12 years when all the Christmas jumpers yeah. came out. We were <clears> one <throat> of the first ones to do the Christmas jumper boom. It's a million <laughs> units distributed all across like TK Maxx and stores and, and, and so on. So I'm, I'm blessed and I'm grateful to have achieved that. Mm. Yeah. Um, but to do it again and go into manufacturing, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Yeah. It was it was hard work. Deep mm. down you knew it was the right time to, yeah. to wind that down. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so the consulting side of it now, you said you're still doing it. I am. Um so obviously after the burnout um happened and I continued consulting and I was still consulting and Actually, I, <laughs> the interesting thing is I got a call from my agent at the time and she said, listen, because I was like, I'm getting bored. You need to give me some more work to do mm. because from going like this to like, nothing, like slow and you're like, oh, like I need more to do. And uh, she said, look, there is something, but it's not fashion related. There's a company that are going through a huge restructure. They would love to have someone young like you on board and, you know, creative and, um and basically it'll be for three months what do you think and i was like yeah sounds good so she was like it's an infrastructure company and i'm like <laughs> very what, different what? i was like what does that mean so she gave me the name of the company and i was like there's people on a construction site wearing yellow hats and and uh, you know yellow jackets what, what i'm not going on a construction site no 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 um it's in the head office you're going to be working with like the head of pr and um and uh, marketing and like the CEO really closely and you know they're doing events and they're going through <laughs> a lot of change right now so I was like okay cool let, let me go on board so I went on board to uh, a company called Balfour BT so I was there for they're huge yeah they, they built all the houses huge. in the UK <laughs> not the houses even like the Olympic stadiums and so the roads much. like everything yeah. so, so, so did you I ask ended, what you were there to do yeah yeah so I was there supporting the the CEO and the head of PR and uh, marketing and the change so I actually was initially supposed to go on for a month I ended up staying on board for six months and becoming um, one of the business uh, partners for the managed major project side of the business um, so I worked a lot with the charity sides of things and building projects there and then I ended up going into the media because they were obviously getting rid of people and I ended up staying on board and I was good at talking to people yeah. and um I ended up going into PR and media and doing um, my practitioner's course, uh, so a master's at the same time I was working. Um, and at the time- practitioner's course. Yeah, so public relations. Mm -hmm. um, so at the time, I 
kind of was like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. What Like, I'm writing a press release on this. Like, I'm writing four or five a day. I'm great at solutions. I'm great at picking up the phone and dealing with certain situations. But I was like, what? So then they were like, look, do you want to do the course? And I was like, yes, thanks. Um, and yeah, I worked on some of the, the best projects ever. I worked on the former Olympic Stadium, Aquatic Center. Wow. Um, yeah, it, amazing, amazing projects, Providence Tower. Um, so it was it was a great, a great experience for me. So I did a three year stint there and I decided, okay, now it's just time to kind of take out. Um, so I took some time out. So I'll what happened to the fashion, cons- like the consulting and that time? Also, I was always kind of doing that. I'll so yeah, on. yeah. And um, yeah, then what happened? Then I took some time out of life. I took about a year out and um, I went and worked with children in South India. Was that India. another burner? No, no, I just wanted some time out um, oh. of life. I d- came out of a relationship <laughs> and uh, so is it, so is it all? you, you know, <laughs> so I wanted to take some time out for myself. And you said you're working with children. And yeah, I went to South India and I worked with some amazing kids in schools and uh, worked with women um, who'd gone through domestic abuse and girls that had been raped at a very young age that went into homes that <coughs> were pregnant, worked with colleges at the time. So I did a three-month stint there. What did that do to you? Oh, I was... Before I went out, I wanted to prep myself. So I'd kind of planned, obviously, I'd left Balfour. I wanted to take some time out because I hadn't taken time out mm. since I'd started mm. life. Like, yeah. I mm. went straight into uni. I went straight into work. I had not had that time out. So mm. I was like, you know, I'm going to give myself six months to a year and just take time out. And I'm I'm so lucky that I was doing a lot of consultancy at the same time with real businesses and real brands that were like, hey, you know what? We've had this business for 35 years and we've just gone like gone online on digital, but no one's going onto our, our website. What do we do? And now I've got all this experience. So obviously, anyway, so during the same time, I went out to South India and it was one of the best things I did. And I, before I went, I kind of then delved more into the coaching side because I was like, I need to prep myself in how I'm going to deal with certain situations. Mm-hmm. Um and you know i think the first week first two weeks i cried because i was like wow it's a yeah. lot to take <clears throat> it's a lot you know and when you see really young girls that are pregnant and away from their family because there's special charity homes if obviously they get raped and they get pregnant they don't stay at home they kind of go to this place either the family keep the but baby it messes, afterwards it messes or with your head because your yeah. eyes are not used to seeing that yeah yeah do you know You're what i mean when you when you see someone pregnant they're usually an adult yeah, yeah. and when it's a young child with this huge bump and you're seeing that evolve and you're like what is this kid going through like you know what is her mental state yeah and your hormones change as a woman mm, and yeah. you're kind of thinking, how is she feeling? Yeah. You know, she's just a kid. She wants her mom and dad. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it really, you really, um, you know, you know how grateful and blessed you you're are. humbled. Yeah. And I think for me, like even the teaching, you know, everything I have been given and taught is to share back to the world. It's not for me to keep. Mm. I haven't been given these experiences, all these mentors or teachers for no reason. You've got to share this back. I don't know when I'm going to leave. I might leave tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not sad about that mm. because it's it's life. But, yeah. you know, I can easily say, you know what? I've achieved everything I wanted in this life. Mm. Yeah. But now it's time for me to kind of just give back. So how are you giving back? How am I giving back? Um, wow. You said you're teaching in a different way. Yes, I am teaching in a different way. So... Seven years ago, I ended up launching. So from consulting, I launched a PR and media agency. Um, And that happened by default, like a lot of the businesses in in my life. Um, And (coughs) the agency that I created was based on the foundation working with real people and real brands. Mm. If someone says, hey, make me famous, like what is the value that you're adding and sharing? I didn't launch this business, like the PR agency for money. It was to work with real people to add real value back to the world, whether they are a nutritionist, whether they are a health expert or a business leader, 
if they've got something to share back, th that circulates back into the media. Yeah. Mm. How many people watch TV? How many people listen to radio? <coughs> how many people read publications? And that's how I'm, I, the, the foundation I built for Abstract PR eight years ago. I'm grateful and blessed for my team now. And at the same time, you know, I, I went, I did my human behavior, behavior training and, and psychometrics because I wanted to understand people more. Yeah. You know, you're in certain situations and you're kind of like, why is this person behaving the way they're behaving? I'm fascinated and so from, by the human Yeah, mind. like, I, you know, for me, it was kind of like, I work with a lot of people in the media industry. And you, like you kind of mentioned earlier, there's a lot of mental health in the creative yeah. industry. <clears throat> and I saw that from the very beginning when I was in the creative industry, you know, and it was kind of like, okay, there are a lot of people that are not taught how to build a business, yeah. especially women and, and men. Yeah. We don't get taught this in school. No, we, don't we don't get taught how to get a mortgage. We don't get taught how to do anything yeah. like this. Um, and, you know, I, I'm blessed because I think, you know, as a, a young person, my dad who has his own business, you know, the, I always used to help do my dad's invoices with my mom. And that's how I learned about cars and you know you're yeah. doing a statutory note for this car and you know the right wing and the left wing so i learned a lot and you kind of think okay um i look back i'm like maybe the seeds were being planted yeah. on how to build a business i i made my dad's first business card when i was not even in high school i was in junior school <laughs> when you have those big fat square computers that make noise and yeah. on microsoft word on a, you know the i created a car and a yeah. word art the thing clip art. And, you know go yeah. motors or whatever I, I, did, I did that for my dad as well <laughs> yeah. It used about, it took about 20 so, minutes to load up. Oh. Yeah, and you know, so it's kind of like, okay, may maybe it was seeded in me. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know. But now I I work with people to help them understand who they are. Because you see a lot of people are trying to build their brands and their businesses. But a lot of people don't know who they are. Yeah, so yeah. They're I think like, a lot of people forget who they are as they well. They do forget who they are because they've, they're kind of living under someone else's values yeah. and life. They also life. don't realize they are the brand. Yeah, 100% Lily. And I think this is where, and this is where I bring the psychometrics and mm. I kind of bring in the knowing yourself and mm. working with them on an unconscious, conscious basis. Mm. So I never tell people who they are. Mm. I yeah. don't work like that. I want you to, I'm going to pull it out of you so you get that clarity of who mm. you are. Um, so that that's how I help people. Um, you know, I do a lot of guest lecturing at universities. Um, so I work with a lot of master's students as well because I think people are not prepared of what's going to happen when they come out of university. Very true. Especially when they're in the creative industry. Um, so the creative industry is just full of so many different opportunities, of course, but mm -hmm. then challenges. You know, you've got rejection, first of all, is a big yeah. one for the creative industries. And then, as you mentioned, it's like many people are not in gear to, to run business or to manage business because it's not naturally yeah. their, their strong point or the, the position that they fall into. Creative people by yeah. default are not necessarily business mm. people, structured, no. organized. And we're not yeah. taught that. We're not taught school. it. Yeah. yeah, you're just expected to, to do it. Mm. Yeah. So what's the favorite part of your day? What's the favorite? Every day for me is a different day. Um, obviously, <laughs> I'm working across Dubai and the UK at the moment. I mean, I love doing my sessions and I love seeing my clients get the aha moment yeah. you know so when you're saying your sessions is this your coaching sessions so yes i mentor people um so when it comes to pr and media strategies or whether they just want clarity or direction it could be anyone i have i work with people from the age of 18 to 60 mm. men and women um and i i don't put it out there but hey, you know, if you feel like you want to work with me and you're pulled towards me and I feel I can work with you and I can help you and serve you, then 100%. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just, I love everything that I do um, in terms of, you know, the, the business, the team, they create amazing results. I love it when, you know, they get seen and, oh my God, I'm in a, a newspaper or in a magazine and this many people have seen it. And it's, that's meaningful. Yeah. Mm. you know um yeah there's uh, lots of things i do obviously i do a lot of speaking events and so on because it's hard to just share on a one-on-one -on -one. so i want to share to wider audiences mm. because i want people to think about their mindset i want people to think about their mental health and yeah. and who they are and 
thrive, mm. be ignited, you know? This world's a crazy world. It's a very it crazy, is a crazy world. world. Oh yeah, God, it's we a live in world. a crazy, fast-paced world, and people do forget who they are. Yeah. And they, you know, social media doesn't help life. Yeah. Um, and people constantly compare themselves. And, you know, it's just about igniting people. Mm. So what's next? I don't know. You said that with the biggest smile on your face, by the <laughs> I way. I don't know. Does it excite you? Yeah, it excites me wow. because I don't know what's next. And it's exciting because mm. I always think, you know, every day we wake up, it's like a surprise. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen today. Oh, what's going to happen in my day? Like, I don't know. Like, and then at the end of the day, of course, you know, at the end of the day, I always do my gratitude journal. <laughs> and because, and the reason I do my gratitude journal and I tell people to do a gratitude journal at the end of the day is because you process what's happened mm, throughout yeah. your day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's people that say, oh, I do my gratitude journal in the morning, but why? You're manifesting things that haven't even happened. So yeah. you're putting an expectation on your day and what happens when <laughs> Ooh, that doesn't that's happen? That's a very true story. Mm. Yeah. And we all get let down by expectations. Yeah. 100%. Can we never fulfill them? Yes. We never achieve them, really. So what were you grateful for in your journal last night? That's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I should be grateful for in the journal today no. for this podcast. <laughs> That's exactly what it will be. On, on that note, I think it's... Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for having thank me. You for yeah. There's Enjoy so many writing. things that we can resonate with that story. Because mm -hmm. there's you. like, you know, burnout journeys and the creative industries. It's tough. And, re it's really and tough. redefining yourself. Yeah. No, so thank you for joining yeah. us. Thank you for having Enjoy me. Enjoy writing in your journal tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mention us, mention us. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Welcome to Rooted Within with Lily and Dan. A podcast that shines a spotlight on positive change makers, sharing their stories of legacy, inspiration, and impact. <laughs>